I've been shooting videos here in my office, mostly at this set for the past four, five, six months now. And uh, I gotta be honest with you guys, I had further plans than what you see here behind me. It came to a point last year where suddenly there was a bunch of product launches and testing and benchmarking to do, and I stopped work on the construction of the set. So I don't wanna pretend like this video is anything more or less than what it actually is. We're gonna be taking another pass at the set here to try to upgrade it and get it to the point that I envisioned in my mind when we first actually started setting the office up. So the RGB acoustic foam panel behind me needs some adjustments, some tweaks, some fixes. We also have this corner over here, which I was planning to add some shelves to and some additional RGB lighting. Then there's this corner over here, which I'd like to make a little bit more photogenic. It has some exposed wall plates and some wires running through it. And we're planning to solve that problem with plant. Plants. Several plants. Excellent! Today's video is brought to you by the new Thermaltake Series 500 cases, available in black and snow finishes and built for optimal cooling performance. More than 60% of the panels are perforated with a stylish and functional hex pattern with dust filters too, of course, while the four included CT140 ARGB fans provide airflow and lighting. There's a hinged tempered glass side panel, support for up to 420 millimeter radiators, an available LCD upgrade kit and more. So click the sponsor link in the video description to check out the Series 500 cases from Thermaltake. So a project like this takes extensive planning and coordination, of course, and we're totally prepared for anything that might happen today. First of all, I started actually back in December by uh, getting some additional LEDs. These are just uh, some pretty basic LED strip lights. They're the exact same ones that we used for the RGB acoustic panel behind me, so I'm hoping to integrate a few more of these into the shelving back in this corner. We started today with a field trip over to Lowe's because I wanted to get uh, maybe some plants and a couple other small tools. I wanted a scraper to use to remove some of the acoustic panels from this unit behind me because we're going to have to reposition and reattach a few of those. Uh, this actually probably isn't the best solution. This is like five bucks and it has a fixed blade, but I got it anyway. I was looking for some storage bins there too, but I couldn't find any that exactly suited my needs. But when we searched for plants, they had lots of live ones, but I wanted the kind that don't require watering. So for a select few of you, we'll be able to see today that, oh my gosh, Paul actually has fake plants here in his office, but anyone watching future videos will just be able to see them in the background and be like, oh, look, life and biodiversity and stuff. But I did grab this one at Lowe's, which is pretty nice looking. This is gonna go on one of the shelves over there. And the very nice representative there said we might have better luck over at Michael's. So we headed up to Michael's. And I don't know how often you guys shop at Michael's, but I feel like everything there is very overpriced, but then it's also always discounted in some way. So these are still fairly expensive, I think, as far as plastic plants go, but they were at least 40% off. And they did have some faux plants that fit the bill for our needs, which is that I wanted something that was a little bit taller to sit actually on the floor floor down here to provide a bit of coverage both for the uh, outlets and panels that are down there as well as for at least one wire that's going to need to snake over here from the RGB acoustic panel behind me. But thankfully they have a much wider selection of plants there than they did over at Lowe's and we found a couple that I think will uh, suit our needs. The other thing about Michael's is I feel like it always just smells a little bit like cinnamon in there. You guys ever smell cinnamon when you go into Michael's and I don't know like even even these plants, I feel like, still smell a little bit like cinnamon. But anyway, I've done enough introduction for this video. Let's get to work starting with a little bit of a revamp of this acoustic panel. The acoustic foam panel, um, a lot of people said that they have not noticed at all that it's out of alignment. And other people, especially since I've started talking about it a little bit in a few recent videos, have said, oh my gosh, now they noticed and it's totally standing out to them and bothering them really badly as well. So first off, this left edge just isn't really as straight as it should be. And then you might be able to tell this top row in particular has developed a gap. It's really, it's really hard to see because there's not a whole lot of light, but basically, this line along the entire top row um, has you know, a millimeter or two of spacing that it's developed in between there. Then there are several spots where the corners align where in a recent video I actually sewed the back of them together so they wouldn't have a gap, but there are some spots that I missed. 
like right here, where there totally is still a gap. And so especially with the LEDs on back there, it shines through and, and you can tell very much that there's a gap. I think part of this is just the fact that this is a little bit flexible in the background and as it's gotten colder and warmer, things have expanded or contracted over time. Then the other thing is that the foam panels, when you get them, they all come flat packed and compressed. And it's really a good idea to give them like at least 24 hours to sort of inflate and get back to their normal size. But I think uh, we kind of rush things a little bit and it's even better if you can give them three days, four days, or even up to a week to let them fully expand. We're gonna pull some off, reattach some, and hopefully we can fix this all up. Making some great progress uh, on this acoustic panel here. Uh, the biggest change, I think, uh, was one that was suggested pretty quickly after I did that first video. So I forget who actually said it in the comments, but thank you very much for your suggestion. Rather than mounting the LED strip to the back of this uh, white panel here, why don't we just go around the edge of the wood, which is a much more sensible way of doing it. I think it might even look better in terms of how it lights up against the wall. And in particular for making the 90 degree turns at each corner, it made that really simple to just sort of wrap it around. I tried to still give it just a little bit of wiggle room there so we weren't doing 90 degree turns, but uh, all the lights still seem to be working. Now we just need to glue down a few of these components here, as well as the AC power adapter. I'm gonna actually glue it along the edge here so that we can feed it over and hide it behind our lovely new plants. Okay, there it is. Uh, something to admit, over the past six months, um, part of the LED strip going around the edge wasn't making full contact at one of the corners, so I could get like blue and green, but I couldn't get red, which is why I've mostly been using blue. So I'm happy now that we can go back to full RGB. And while certain parts like this edge along here are looking much cleaner and much smoother, other areas like, I don't know, right along the very top there are, are maybe, maybe less so. Overall though, very happy with the tweaks and the upgrades and uh, you know, maybe in another five or six months, I, we, I will do it again and see if I can make it align even better but I think for now it's good to go. As you can see, it's just got the one uh, cord coming off this side for power, so uh, that's what we got these plants for. Look at that, cord? What cord? I don't see any cord. You can still kind of see those wall plates though. Yep, not anymore. Ta-da! <laughs> False hardware set, now with foliage. We may now proceed to the next phase of this little project. Uh, I have some shelves. Uh, we actually got these at Ikea. 
many, many months ago when the rest of the set was set up and I never got around to installing them. So the plan is to put a couple of those over there. And then along this wall, I want something functional as well as something that looks good. So for that, I have this pegboard storage setup configuration. It's by a company called Wall Control. All right guys, a bit more time has passed and I've been doing some work here. I haven't recorded all of it, but let me give you an update on my progress. So here it is, the upgraded set. And uh, the main thing I wanted to show you guys right now, I, I need my phone for, it's Home Assistant. And I've got the setup and I've got all of the LEDs connected here in the background. I also made a group to group them all together. There's different ways to do this, but basically just with my phone now, I can tap these things and change the lighting. So hopefully you guys can see, but like if I want green, everything's green yellow and everything's yellow if i want red i can make everything red and that includes uh, not just the acoustic panel rgb back there but the two overhead leds and then i've added one more led down here so quality of life improvements include these plants down here in the corner now doing a great job masking some of the cable management i had to do back there and i have several plants scattered around and i'm really happy that they're never going to die because technically they're not alive so apart from my wasp over here, which is not currently connected to Wi-Fi, and I'm not sure if I'll actually do that. This one has built-in controls and it's a, it's a fancier light that I might move around. So I mainly wanted to get these background LEDs connected to the Wi-Fi, these overhead ones. And uh, we also have, I don't know if anyone noticed, but one of these uh, sort of finishing round things here was also missing from one of these. So Joe replaced that, which is really nice. And then over here in this corner, just wanted a little bit more lighting. I felt like things were a little dark back here. So I added one more LED strip sort of tucked under the bottom of this. I used one of the LED strips that I had actually pulled off of the back of the acoustic foam panel. So all of the adhesive was pretty much shot. So I cut it a little bit shorter to line up with this. And then I just used my glue gun to re-glue it across here. Then I also connected the controller up right there and then ran the wire back down here. It's just sort of held on back there with some gaff tape. But with that connected to Home Assistant as well, like I just showed you, I can control both of these lights individually or I can uh, use the group setting to control all of them at the same time. And I'm probably gonna mess around a little bit more with those group settings and everything because I, I feel like these top two bulbs should be a different color than these LEDs over here. But apart from all that, the acoustic panel is back up on the wall and I would say don't look too closely at this. It's better than it was. It's still not perfect. I'm not sure if I'm gonna attack it again, but it's fine for me for now. And then of course there is this uh, pegboard. It's, it's actually peg metal. These are, these are metal pieces. These come from a company called Wall Control. I wish there was a place that you could like go in store to buy these because they were a little bit damaged in shipping. The corners were dinged up a little bit. You can kind of see like a, a little crease in it right there. 
not the end of the world or anything, but it, it is a little bit less like picture perfect than I kind of hoped it had been. And I've only just started to fill this out with some various holders for things. And of course I got all my screwdrivers right there. And then I totally ripped off Kyle by mounting an RGB LED keyboard right here. And even though I kind of cheated with the wiring by using a little bit of uh, hot glue, because uh, I don't know, I've got a hot glue gun, so I've been using it a lot. I ran the wire back through there and along there, and it's just plugged into my main system right here. So obviously there's still a lot of blank space up here. I haven't quite populated this all the way. I actually do have a bunch of other attachments. Uh, I got some extra hooks here. There's some shelves I can put up there, but I haven't exactly decided where I want those to go. And then I really like having these little bins that you can store stuff in, so I got an extra set of these. And I really like that it has both these vertical slots, which are for the uh, clips and holders that come with it, but it's also compatible with, uh, I, I forget the sizing, but a pretty standard pegboard sizing. So these bins are actually made for standard pegboards, but um, they've still got these little hooks that can just hook into the round holes and have a little bit more storage the plant there, right? Oh yeah, it's really nice to have my uh, million subscriber plaque actually mounted on the wall. It feels a little bit more official rather than just having it propped up back here. And of course I had to start populating these shelves with a bit of memorabilia. So we have some little Lego minis. This is a little AT-AT walker. Uh, we've got the Tauntaun here with uh, Luke and his lightsaber. And a little mini Millennium Falcon with Han Solo there. Look, these can actually shoot. I'm never gonna find that. So there you have it guys, some pretty nice upgrades to my set here and uh, I'm really, really satisfied with how a lot of these came out. First of all, getting the LEDs to work with the Wi-Fi and Home Assistant, I'm really, really happy about that. And I've heard from a lot of you guys that you're interested in the laptop setup that I'm running that off of right now and you want a little bit more on that. I mentioned that setup briefly back in December and I'm planning to expand it out a little bit more. So if you're still interested in a follow-up on that setup for Home Assistant and also gonna do some network attached storage, let me know in the comment section down below. In the meantime, I will also post links to a lot of the hardware and various things that I use today in the description too. So check that out before you go. You can also find a link to my store down there at paulshardware.net where you can help support my channel and get yourself some awesome merch. And by buying some awesome merch, that helps support my channel. And we do have a sale going on on hoodies right now. Perfect for winter. Thanks again for watching though, guys. Hit the thumbs up button on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And we'll see you all in the next one.